Um, okay, I'm going to pretty much pick up where I left off. So I, as I said, I want to tell you about some geometric techniques we've been using to try to understand some, answer some of these questions about um, art and groups. And um, the first um, geometric object we want to play with is, is called the Deline complex. So let's review, let me recall what that is. Gamma. So we have our, our we have our um, defining graph gamma, and um, we take d gamma to be um, the it's a cube complex with um, vertices um, are cosets of special subgroups. Remember t is a subset of S, and we look at the sub subgroup generated by t where we require that AT is finite type. So remember, so remember that um, um, just because the, oh, by the way, you should, you should assume we're working with A gamma is infinite, that the, the full group is infinite type. Otherwise, these aren't interesting. We're trying to deal with how do we, how do we answer some of these questions for infinite type. So I'll be mostly interested in the case where, where the full group is infinite type. But it could have finite type pieces in it. For example, any edge generates a finite type. Um, all right, in groups. So it'll have subgroups that are finite type. Okay, so vertices are, are that. Um, edges are, um, are simply um, where we, where we um, get from one coset to another by adding a single generator. And um, cubes are where we have a get well, that is a cube. That's a one. That's a one-dimensional cube. Higher-dimensional cubes are what I call intervals, where we can add um, more than one thing. So a a r, where t is contained in r, and it might if it just adds one thing, we just get an edge. If we add two things, we get a two a two cube. If we add three things, we get a three cube, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's what the Deline complex is, and um, we're interested in this. Um, because, uh, as I said, originally we introduced it because we were trying to um, um, prove the um, so fact, which I'm not going to prove, is that d gamma is homotopy equivalent to this hyperplane complement. The universal cover of the hyperplane complement that we would like to prove is contractible. So the question is um, that we want to ask is when is um, so a question? We have this cube complex. We want to know is d gamma Cat zero. Okay, and why do we want to know that? Let's just recall some basic facts about cat zero. Um, um, uh, actually, maybe I should say um, Yeah, let me say instead, I mean, we do want to know if it's cat zero, but what we're actually going to check is whether it's non-positively curved. Is d gamma non-positively curved? Um, non-positively curved. Okay, so, um, so let me recall some basic facts about um, x is a g decimal from, from um, this morning. Geodesic metric space. Um, then the point is, if you have x simply connected and non-positively curved, that implies that it's cat zero. And if it's cat zero, uh, um, that implies that geodesics are unique. So what do I mean? I mean, given two points in your space, there's one and only one geodesic connecting them. All right, that's what I mean by geodesics are unique. So given two points, there's a unique geodesic. By the way, I'm using the cat zero metric here, not the, not the taxi cab metric. Yes? OK, so straight, straight line. So, so if I, so I want to get from here to here, I go this way. I don't go around the outside. All right, I'm not a taxi cab. I know. What is the definition of non-positive cab? So uh, now it is metric space, not a cube complex. So this no, no, cube. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. For the, for, uh, no, I mean, there is a non-positively curve for general. I, I, I'm going to be interested in a um, cube complex. 
Um, it just means locally. I mean, this makes sense for any uh, geodesic metric space. It just means locally cat zero. I mean, it just, it, it's a local version of cat zero. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, um, in my particular case, it's, it's going to be a cube complex, so non-positively curved will be proved using the flat. We'll, we'll get to that, how, how to prove that. But this is actually true more generally if you define this to just mean locally, cat, locally satisfies the cat zero condition. OK, let me, it, this is not, it's not important. We'll get, to, we'll get to this in a second. So it's cat zero. Geodesics are unique. And here's the point that I don't, I'm not sure whether um, Danny said this morning. Once geodesics are unique, x zero is contractible. And this, is the, and this is the point that we want. Why is that? Well, if I have any space, x, and geodesics are unique, then I can pick any base point whatsoever. There's a unique path to any other point in the space. And I can just contract the space along those paths. And you could show that that's continuous and blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's just general nonsense about cat zero geometry. Once you have cat zero, you automatically have contractible. And that is actually what I want, is contractibility. OK? All right. So I would like to prove this is contractible. That's the k pi 1 conjecture. So it suffices to prove that this is contractible. So it suffices to prove that this is simply, con that, that d gamma is simply connected and non-positively curved. I already know simply connected. That follows from this. All right? It's automatically simply connected if it's homotopy equivalent to a universal cover. All right? So I already know this. And what I need is this. All right? So we're reduced to showing, so need to show, or we want to know that it's d gamma non -positive, is non-positive curved. And how do we do that? Now we really are working in a cube complex. We're genuinely looking in a cube complex. And we know that non-positively curved, um, it, it, to show things non-positively curved, we need to show that the links of vertices are flag complexes. All right? So d gamma non-positively curved, if and only if, links, um, links of, uh, let me put it here, if and only if links of vertices, of all the vertices, are, I'm going to capitalize this for a reason, flag complexes. And now we need to remember what it means to be a flag complex, because we're going to try and check. We're going to get in there and look at it and see if it's a flag complex. So what does it mean to be a flag complex? It means, so the link is a, is a, is a, um, is a simplicial complex, right? Because the, the link inside, so we're at a point, and, and, and inside every cube, the link sees a little, a little simplex, all right? So the link's a simplicial complex. A flag complex. remember, um, is um, a simplicial complex. Here's how I like to think about it. This is in a formal definition. Simplicial complex with no, what I call, empty simplices. What do I mean by that? So what I mean is whenever I see the one skeleton of a simplex, that simplex is there. It's filled in. You never see, for example, a triangle with no filling in it, all right? Whenever I see a one, the one skeleton of a simplex, the simplex is there. Instead of talking about one skeleton of simplices, I'd like to talk about, so the one skeleton, so, so, the, so, the, so the one, um, um, the one dimensional um, space is, is a graph. I mean, we're looking at a graph. So instead of saying a one skeleton of a simplex, it's what I call a clique. Have you ever heard the word clique? A clique is a graph where every vertex is joined to every other vertex by an edge. So another way of saying this, that is, so what do I mean by this? What I mean is every clique in the one skeleton spans a simplex. Every say k clique, clique with k spans a k simplex. OK? All right. OK, so that's what we've got to check. We're going to look at, the, at, at cliques in the link and ask whether they span simplices. All right, let's do it. I thought I'd actually do something like get in there and 
you know, I, I'm, hoping that, I'm hoping some of you looked at some of the questions on this, all right? So we need to understand the links of vertices in d gamma. And I'm not going to do a complete proof. I'm going to do a link of a particular vertex where you already see what can go wrong. And it turns out um, that's the picture, basically, for all of them. But let's do, let's look at, um, so consider the vertex. So I'm going to look at a vertex in d gamma. Um, um, just call it x is the vertex corresponding to a empty set in d gamma. All right, so a vertex in d gamma, where are they? There they are. They're cosets of finite type subgroups, all right? A empty set is the trivial group. It's about as finite type as you can get. I said those things can be, those, uh, those t's can be empty. I'm taking t to be the empty set. And um, that is a vertex in d gamma, all right? OK, it's not the only kind of vertex, but let's look at that one and study it carefully, all right? So what is the link? In d gamma. All right, so I'm at the A empty set, and I'm going to look at a little, a little kind of um, sphere around it, all right, and, and, and ask what I see. Well, uh, the vertices in the link come from edges that emanate from here, all right? They hit this thing in a, in a vertex, right? So the vertices come from edges. Well, what are the edges attached to A, a, a empty set? Well, any generator generates a finite type. Any single generator is finite type. So I have something for S1. I have one for AS2. I have one for, I have one for every generator, et cetera. Yeah? Each one of those is a vertex. So um, there's a vertex. So link um, x has a vertex for each um, um, a SI, for each SI. Each, each SI gives me a vertex, namely the edge that goes to ASI. Everybody understand what I'm saying? OK, for each SI, I have one of these edges. Right? So there's one for each SI. Yeah? OK, when are two of these joined by an edge? All right? Well, they're joined by an edge in the link. In other words, when does, the, when does this exist? It exists precisely when this is filled, this is some cube. Precisely when there's a cube there, all right? So when is there a cube here? Well, it's got to have an, another vertex up there. And what does that vertex have to be? It has to be A, S1, S2, right? So this, in order for this to be here, it has to be A, S1, S2. Well, is that allowed? It's allowed if and only if those two generate a finite, type sub, a finite type subgroup. In other words, if and only if the mij is not equal to infinity. All right, so um, two of these, two such, are connected by an edge in the link. If and only if. Um, so I have an SI and an SJ, if and only if um, a SI SJ is finite type, namely if and only if um, um, MIJ. So if and only if, <laughs> let's, let's make our lives easy, um, it, it spans an edge in gamma, uh, that is MIJ is less than infinity. In other words, there's an edge, if and only if there's an edge in gamma between them. Yes? Because otherwise, if there's no edge, if mij is infinite, then this, then this, then this cube is not allowed. It doesn't exist. All right? OK. Well, guess what? We just, cons we just constructed the one skeleton of the link. We know what the, po what the vertices and what the edges are. What is it? It's gamma. It's exactly gamma. It's one vertex for each SI and one edge for each edge, all right? So that is, so the one skeleton, that is thus the one skeleton of the link of x is exactly gamma. 
can exactly be identified with gamma. A vertex for each SI, an edge whenever SI, SJ. Yeah? So if I look at the link, I know what its one skeleton is. It's exactly, I just see gamma. That's it. All right. So what we want to know now is whether, um, so now we know what the one skeleton is, and, and what do we need to check? Well, we need to look at cliques in gamma and ask whether those, car, whether those get filled in in the link. Yeah? Whenever I see a clique in gamma, that's a clique in the link. I need to know whether it gets filled in. All right? So let's figure out if it gets filled in. So, um, um, so we, need, we need to check whether um, every clique in gamma is um, filled with a simplex in, in this link. All right, so let's draw one and try and construct it. All right, so maybe let's just draw one with three, but it could have more. Let's say I have an AS1, an AS2. I mean, it doesn't matter what the numbers are, but I have three of these, right? And they generate a click. Well, what does that mean? That means that, means that um, yeah, that these two, that th there must be a cube here. So I'm looking at the I'm looking at the link, uh, right? And I'm drawing the uh, I'm drawing part of d gamma here that's around this. So there's a, a cube there, there's a cube here, and then these two also join a cube. Yeah. So I three three faces, but that's not good enough. That just forms this, and I want to know is that filled in? So to fill that in, this whole picture has to be in some cube. There has to be some cube that completes that, that this whole thing lives in, yes? There has to be a three-dimensional cube spanned by those, right? We've got these three edges, and I need a three-dimensional cube to fill it, all right? What's, what's going to be at the other end? I, I'm not drawing this very well. So what's going to be at the other end of this three-dimensional cube? Yeah. What's going to be the, no, that's not drawn very well. It's the diagonal of a cube. What's at the other end of the diagonal of this three cube? I'm, I'm having a hard time drawing this cube. Um, can anybody see what has to be there? It's got to be, it, just like it was there, it, the other end of the cube has to be S1, S2, S3, right? It has to contain them all. It has to contain this, this, this. I've, I haven't drawn this very well. It's supposed to look like a cube. Um, so I have these three edges, and in order to complete that cube, the other end of the cube has to contain all three of those. All right? So it has to be AS1, S2, S3. So what are we saying? We're saying that whenever um, they're pairwise, so, so, so in order for this to be true, we would need this to be finite type. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. So the issue is, if I have a bunch of things which are pairwise finite type, is the whole union of them finite type? And the answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. And then we're in trouble. So here's the condition. I will now write out the condition for this thing to be um, um, so, 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 um, yeah. So here's the here's the claim. Um, is that um, that the link of this X is flag um, if and only if um, for every clique um, for every um, clique, and I'm just going to write T in gamma. What I mean is a set of vertices which span a clique is what I really mean. For every set of vertices which span a clique in gamma is what I really mean. Um, AT is finite type. All right. For every clique, 
a t of finite type. I'm going to give you examples in just one minute, but I want to introduce um, terminology, um, definition. Um, a gamma is, um, we say A gamma is FC type, is of FC type um, if this condition holds, if every clique, if, um, if star holds. That's it. I, I, I simply would refer, it's sometimes, as I will show you in examples in just a second, sometimes this holds and sometimes it doesn't hold. And we call it FC type if it does hold. Why FC? Flag complex. The FC, I was going to underline it, but it disappeared up there. FC stands for flag complex. It's exactly what we need to guarantee the links are flag complexes. All right? Yeah. You just guaranteed, uh, oh, yeah. just guaranteed that the link of the uh, that vertex. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, you have to prove this for all. I haven't ri written the statement, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, write the. Um, 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 after I do the examples, I'll write down the theorem. It turns out this is all that goes wrong. So it turns out if you look at, so what happens if you look at any other vertex is you have what's called the upward link, things bigger than it, where exactly this problem occurs. And then you have the downward link, which are things smaller than it, where never, no problems ever occur. So it, there's more, you're absolutely right. I haven't checked all the vertices. You have to check all the vertices. But the issues all show up right here. Turns out they all show up right here. The rest of it is you can, you know, takes a little little bit of um, lemmas, but it's no no problem. All right. So if you're going to see any problems, you're going to see it right here in this in this in this link. Um, okay. So I'll I'll write down the theorem in a minute, but let me do some examples so I make sure everybody understands what FC type is. Um, so examples. Um, here are three graphs, and the question is, are they FC type or are they not FC type? Three, three. Three, three. This is this is gamma I'm drawing. This is gamma. So, e.g., here's some graphs gamma. There's one. Here's another one. Three, three, three. I'm putting a lot of threes. We're playing with threes today. Three, three. And um, the last one is um, any, any red. Right angled, right angled art and group, meaning any graph where everything's labeled two. All the edges are labeled two. That's right angled. Right angled means every mij is either two or infinity. Yes, the right angled ones, the only relations are commutators. So, so right angled means any graph you want as long as all the labels are twos. All right? OK, is this FC type? So the question is FC type or no? Yes, why? Well, the only cliques are edges. There are no other cliques in this graph. Cliques are, are sets of vertices, all of which are joined by edges. So the only cliques are edges, and a single edge labeled 3, well, that's the braid group on three strands. That's definitely finite type. That one, any, si any single edge is a dihedral. Is a dihedral <laughs> one. OK, so yes, no problem here. What about this guy? Well, this one has a clique right here, right? Those three guys generate a clique. And that 333 thing had, was the Coxeter group for that was that affine reflection group that I said was infinite. And I used it as an example of a case where you get something infinite even though there's no, the MIJs are not infinity. This was that, that um, affine Coxeter group. And it's infinite, bad. So no, it has a bad. In fact, the minute you see a 333 triangle, forget it. You're, you're, you're lost. You're gone. All right? Um, OK. Right angled Artin group. So if I see a clique, it means I've got a bunch of um, generators, all of which commute with each other. And um, oh, I guess we need to know what the Coxeter group for that is. What's the Coxeter group for that? If I just take a bunch of generators all connected to each other and put twos everywhere, Anybody know what the Coxer group for that is? Yeah. It's just a direct sum of a bunch of Z-mod 2s. Yeah, it, it's, just the, it, it, it's just they all commute. It's just a bunch of Z-mod 2s that commute with each other. So it's finite. Z-mod 2 plus Z-mod 2 plus Z-mod 2. They all commute with each other. So a bunch of generators of order 2. So the Coxer group's finite. So the answer is yes, always. We mean no conditions whatsoever. Um, rags are a special case of FC type. 
FC type, all right? They're just a special case, all right? Okay, so, um, okay, so what's the point? I, I claim we've actually sort of more or less, we haven't proved it because we haven't checked everything, but we've kind of more or less proved the following. Um, uh, let's see here, theorem. Um, D gamma, uh, D gamma, the Deligne complex is cat zero, or non-positively curved or equivalently cat zero, if and only if um, um, it gamma, A gamma is FC type. So the answer is there are lots of nice infinite type Artin groups for which it is, and lots of nice infinite type Artin groups for which it isn't. I mean, it's just you know, that's the way it goes, all right? Okay, so once we know it's cat zero, we have the, um, we have the um, fact that I discussed at the beginning. It implies that it's contractible, and hence um, um, k pi 1 conjecture holds. So this immediately implies k pi 1 conjecture holds for a gamma by the argument I gave up there that if we could show that it was cat zero, then it's contractible, and hence, and hence this is true. All right, that was the argument I gave at the beginning. <laughs> okay, so that's great. I mean, that's kind of, as I said, this was, uh, Mike Davis and I did this, and this is what we were setting out to do, was to prove the k pi 1 conjecture. Um, there, I should say, I'm not going to talk about it um, in, in this talk, but there are some other metrics one can put on d gamma, and there is one called the Musang metric, which is conjectured to be cat zero for all gamma, but nobody's been able to prove it. We were able to prove it when it was d gamma was two-dimensional, but we can't prove it for anything bigger than that. So it's possible that there are other metrics which are cat zero, but the cubical metric is cat zero if and only if this FC type condition is is satisfied. All right. Okay. So, um, okay. So now what? Um, oh yeah. I want to say it's better than that. Um, so it turns out, and let me put a few names on this because there are a bunch of people involved in this. So first, Mike Davis and I, um, then um, 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 one of my students, Joe Altabelli, and then um, Eddie Goodell. actually prove that um, if, a, if A gamma is FC type, then all of the conjectures, um, the old con that list of conjectures, the, conject the star conjectures, all that list over there hold are true, hold. And I, I'm going to say a little bit about how you prove the others, um, because they all sort of depend on this one. They all sort of, all but one of them kind of follow once you have this. So let me, let me say a little bit about this. So I'm going to work, work my way up words so we know, so we say, okay, we know this is true, all right? So why is there a finite k pi 1? And um, for that, I need to tell you what the Salvetti complex is, which is interesting anyway. So, so in addition to this Deligne complex, by the, way, by the way, you might say, doesn't this show that A gamma is cat 0? And if you did the problems that I suggested, it doesn't because the action's very much not proper. It's co-compact, but it's definitely not proper. It has these huge infinite stabilizers. So, um, so it doesn't, so the group itself is not a cat zero group. Uh, the action's not nice enough. Okay, um, but um, uh, yeah, so, so how do we get a finite k pi 1? Well, for that, um, w we, we constructed a different complex, which is also homotopy equivalent to H gamma tilde. And once we know H gamma tilde is contractible, it turns out that this complex gives us a k pi 1 space, all right? So that complex is called the Salvetti complex because it was first constructed by Salvetti in the, uh, in the finite type case. But we, we did the general construction for the infinite type case, all right? But he first introduced it in the finite type case. So, um, so let's talk about that. Um, oh, I can go over here. So. Um, uh, let's see. So I guess we're, we're so I'm not going to do the full proof. I'm just going to say a little bit about how some of these others follow. So, um, so fact, yeah. Um, 
What? How many um, rags are FC type? Is it? They're not rags. Arsene Group's FC type. If I drew a random graph and put labels on it, am I expecting it? Is it or is it unusual? To it? Yeah. No. No. It. It. It's. Um. There's. Uh, so I actually have a student who's got some actual. Um, basically. You have to avoid too many threes. I mean, if random. So, what do you mean by random graph? So, this is a whole. There's a whole um, um, uh, a, a paper on this. I could tell you about that. Where where you have to have a probability for the labels as well as the graph itself. It's not enough to have a to know the graph. You have to have probability for the labels. And essentially, if the probabilities of threes are too high, you're going to see one of these three, three, three triangles and you're, 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 done, you're, you're done with. But if you can avoid, you know, if you keep the probability of threes reasonably low, then, then yes, you, get a high, you can get a high probability of getting ones that are. So, I mean, that's not the only condition you have to get, you know. But essentially, that's the problem, is these, three, three, is these threes. Um, so it's an interesting question. I can tell you about where the paper, tell you, send you look at the paper. Um, um, so, um, yeah, oh, I should say, I think somebody asked me this in between, and uh, for those of you who aren't that familiar with Coxeter groups, um, you know, in order to know whether uh, something's a finite type or infinite type um, art and group, we need to know whether the Coxeter group for that graph is finite or infinite. Well, Coxeter groups for finite graphs are completely classified. You go to any any book on Coxer groups and you'll see a list. You'll see a half page long diagram showing you all the finite type Coxer groups. They're one of these and if it's not one of these, it's infinite. All the finite Coxer groups. If it's not one of these, it's infinite. I mean, we know exactly which Coxer groups are finite and which ones aren't. So that's not a difficult problem. It's a known, it's a completely known um, um, fact. And, and they're almost all infinite. There are only very few that are finite. So. Um, okay, so, all right, so where are we? We are, oh yes, I'm going to just write this as a remark, but it's sort of a remark about the proof of this, about some of what goes into the, the proof of this. So, um, um, so how do we get the finite, so the finite k pi 1 that, this, that we get from um, conjecture 2, so the finite um, k a gamma 1 space um, is, um, a generalization of the Salvetti complex, which um, um, Danny, um, you did this morning, right? You described the Salvetti complex for, red, for right angled art groups. So we're going to generalize this Salvetti complex for regs. So here's what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to construct it for you. Let's call it S gamma. Um, so let's S gamma for Salvetti. So I have my graph gamma, and I'm trying to um, construct a, a, a finite Ka gamma 1 space. So uh, here's what I do. I'm going to start with a single vertex. I'm going to put on a loop for each generator, just like you would for, 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 um, um, for S1, S2, one for each generator. And in the right angled case, what you then had to do is start gluing on tori for commuting elements, right? More and more tori when you have collections of commuting elements. Well, we're not just interested in commuting elements now. We're interested in any collection of elements that's finite type, that generates a finite type subgroup, all right? So if I have a collection T that generates a um, um, finite type subgroups, that means that, the, that WT, so let's say T is contained in S, and, and let's say the Coxeter group is finite. So the Artin group would be finite type. All right? Then there's something, for any time you have a finite Coxeter group, you have something called a Coxeter cell. And I drew you one of these earlier. So if you have, for example, a two generator thing, you just look at all the, you look at its action on Rn, you look at all the reflection hyperplanes, all right? It chops up your space. You take a point in the interior of one of these regions, and you take its orbit, and then take the convex hull of that orbit. All right? You can do that in two dimensions, but also in higher dimensions if you have more generators than two. You take the convex hull of the orbit of a point. All right? That thing is some nice Euclidean polytope, poly, polyhedron. All right, you get some nice Euclidean polyhedron. And not only that, it turns out, let me draw this a little nicer. It turns out 
that the one skeleton is exactly the Cayley graph of Wt. So if this is the identity, then I've moved, I've taken the orbit, so every point in here corresponds to a point in Wt, and getting across one of these is exactly doing some, um, some um, can be done by a reflection. So maybe this is S, T, S, and this will be T, S, T. And notice that if I read around here, it says that S, T, S equals T, S, T, which is exactly the relations I want. So I take the, I, I fill this in. This is called a coxeter cell for Wt, and when I do this, one for each t, one for each of these, I make a coxeter cell, and then I glue it on. And how do I glue it on? I just glue it according to the labels. I glue the s's to the s's and the t's to the t's, and that's the Salvetti complex. Now, in the case of a right-angled Artin group, these guys are just tori. All I get is st equals ts. They're just tori, all right? But now I get some sort of bigger structures, and I simply glue one for each t, one for each of these t's gets glued onto this, and it's finite. There are only finitely many subsets, you know, and, and I glue on finitely many cells, and it's almost obvious from what I said that it has fundamental group. What's the fundamental group? Well, the fundamental group is first generated by these with some relations added, right? What are those relations? They're the Artin group relations. In other words, it's, it's a, basically a, a no-brainer, an easy exercise to show that this is true. All right? What's not clear is that the universal cover is contractible. All right? This is easy. All right? So the issue is, is this a Ka gamma 1 space? And to be a Ka gamma 1 space, we need this um, 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 to be contractible, and so the key Proof that the proof of <coughs> the proof of four was basically proving that that the universal covering space of this is homotopy equivalent to so to prove to prove conjecture four show what we showed was that the universal cover is also homotopy equivalent to H gamma tilde. It was another space helmet. Yeah. Is this without restriction on like uh, a gamma being X C type? Like, is this homotopy equivalence always true? This homotopy equivalence is always true. Yes, this one's always true. So does it? And the other one was true too. You know, this d gamma homotopy equivalent to H. This was always true too. These two homotopy equivalences are always true. The question is, can we prove any of this stuff is contractible? And we needed Cat zero to prove this was contractible. All right. This is always the case. This is always the case. All right. Um, so the point is, once we've proved conjecture five, we've also proved conjecture four. So once we know that this guy is contractible, we get that this guy is contractible, and then and then we're done. All right. So using once we know this, we get that conjecture four five implies conjecture four. OK, but conjecture 4 implies conjecture 2. Why? Because um, if you have a k pi 1 space for a group, then you could just look at the action of a subgroup, just look at the, t t go to the universal cover and just look at some subgroup acting on it, and you get a k pi 1 for the subgroup. But torsion groups can't have finite dimensional k pi 1 spaces. So a, a space with a finite k pi 1 space cannot contain torsion, just never cannot contain torsion. So that comes out for free, that A gamma is torsion free. And it leaves us with only two um, conjectures to prove. And um, I, I don't have time to tell you much about this. I'll just say that the first one, the solvable word problem, used the cat zero structure to say, well, there's sort of canonical paths between um, well, it uses the cat zero structure to reduce the problem to looking at stabilizers. But the stabilizers are all finite type, and we already have the word problem solved for those. So we can just sort of reduce to stuff we already know. It allowed us to reduce it down to 
chunks that we already understood. So uh, again, the d gamma, the cat zero-ness of d gamma was absolutely crucial in proving the word problem for, for, for that. And the last one I can't say anything about, uh, totally different methods. The, um, that was Eddie Goodell's work the, uh, about, the, about the center. I'm not going to say anything about that right now. Okay so, um, okay, so anyway, you actually get all the conjectures. This was just telling you a little bit about how, why some of them follow pretty quickly and easily once you've, once you've got that one. All right, so um, yeah, let's keep moving. All right, so great. So we have this fairly good sized class of um, uh, infinite type Barton groups called FC type for which we can answer the questions. All right, now what? All right, it, in fact, the whole picture sat there since that was in the 90s that most of this was done, and there was no progress at all for um, quite a long time after that. And so I want to tell you about some more recent work. Um, that it is beginning to produce some um, new results. All right, so now we suppose we have an infinite type one which is not FC type. So this FC fails. Um, so, um, what if – well, it turns out that we can modify <coughs> d gamma um, so that um, to, to make it – cat zero for all gamma. Okay, what went wrong with d gamma? Well, what went wrong is you had things which were pairwise joined. They, they, they spanned a clique, but you couldn't finish it. You, you weren't allowed to put the AT at this end. That, that the AT that should have gone, completed the cube, what, sorry, AT, was not allowed. It wasn't finite, finite type. All right, well, let's stop worrying about whether it's finite type or not, and let's just fill in every clique and just say, I don't care if AT is finite type or not, let's just stick that cube in there, that missing cube. All right, so this is called um, the clique cube complex. Um, yeah, okay, so um, define. Um, the clique cube complex. Which we'll call C gamma. Um, it's a lot like D gamma. It's, in fact, the vertices um, are, are um, well, again, cosets. So again, A is in A gamma. But now we don't put so much restriction on this. All we care is that T spans a clique. All right, before we required that AT was finite type. I don't care anymore. All I care is that it, the T spans a clique. All right, I'm allowing a lot more vertices than I was allowing before. All right, so for example, if I see one of those three, three, threes, that's okay, that's allowed here. I'm allowing that, okay? So it's more vertices, and the rest are the same. Edges and cubes defined as before. Edges means you add one guy, cubes mean you take an interval. So as before, Sa same rules. So an edge is one that where you just add a single generator and a cube is one where you add uh, more than one generator. Um, all I've done is added some extra vertices in here. And of course some extra cubes come along with it when I do that. Okay? All right, um, so theorem, and this was first proved by Paris and Medell. Um, C gamma, we just got rid of the problem. This cat zero for all gamma. 
no matter how, for any of our finite labeled graphs. OK, we seem to have fixed the whole problem, right? What's wrong? Sorry? So you don't want to be equivalent. Yeah, so exactly. So this is the good news, but then there's bad news. So unfortunately, um, we, there's two things to notice that we lose. The first is that C gamma uh, um, is, it, well, we no longer know. We no longer know that C gamma, if C gamma is homotopy equivalent to H. We, we don't know what the relation now is with, the, with, the, with this guy. Remember, we designed D gamma to understand this guy. Well, we've got a very nice complex now, but we have no idea if it's related to this anymore or how it's related to this. So we lost our connection to the k pi 1 conjecture. All right? Not only that, we're in really bad shape. If gamma itself is a clique, is a clique, well, that's certainly possible. Why not? So any, any two vertices in gamma are connected by some edge, then, this, comp then this, um, this guy is totally uninteresting. Because if gamma itself is a clique, then I'm allowed, this could be a gamma. This could be everything. I could take t equal to s. And that contains everything. All right? So then, then the diameter of um, C gamma is, is finite. In fact, so in fact, um, um, every, every maximal cube contains the vertex, the vertex A, A, S, or in other words, A gamma. <laughs> if I take T equal to S, if I take T to be everything, the subgroup generated by everything is A gamma, and that contains every other coset. So every cube contains this one vertex. This is vertex that every maximal cube lives in. Well, that's pretty uninteresting. It's, it, it, for those of you who do geometric wave theory, you know that if a complex has diameter, a finite diameter, it might as well just be a point. It's of no use to, for studying anything, really. Okay? So it's not much good in that case. All right. So what have we gained? We've, you know, we've gained something, and we've lost something. Yeah? OK, so is it good for anything? And the answer is it's still good for some things. So here's, um, here's a theorem. A recent theorem of myself and Rose Morris Wright is in the audience. This is one person, two names. I should put prints. What do you, are you like this? <laughs> um, OK. Um, um, so here we go. Well, actually, this part of it is uh, Paris Goodell, but I'll, I'll explain which part. So um, if um, gamma is um, not the star, of a single vertex, meaning there's no vertex that's connected to every other vertex in gamma. All right. So if it's not the star of a single vertex, um, um, then a gamma has trivial center. So this is um, this is conjecture three. All right, basically conjecture three holds under some reasonable conditions. Um, um, uh, and two, um, if gamma is not a join, meaning, meaning um, everybody knows what a join is, meaning there are two subgraphs, gamma one, gamma two, such that everything in here is connected to everything in here by an edge. Every vertex here is connected to every vertex here by an edge. Then um, a gamma is a cylindrically hyperbolic. A cylindrically hyperbolic. Um, and three, and this really was already in the Paris and Goodell. We have some different proofs, but this was already in the Paris and Goodell paper. Perhaps the most interesting thing is that. Um, all of the conjectures, so all the other conjectures, all other than the centralizer one, all the other conjectures um, star on that list 
um, reduce to the case where um, del is a single click. That is to say, if we could prove them for the case, if we knew how to deal with this case where gamma was a single click, then we would know the conjectures were true for everything. So you can use this complex to reduce the problem down to this case. But we have no idea how to deal with this case. All right? But it reduces us. It says that's what we've got to look at now. We've got everything reduced to the, that, that, that case. All right. Um, I, I had originally hoped to um, actually give a proof of the centralizer one. Um, I think I don't have time, but let me make a couple of comments. Um, this doesn't quite prove this. Uh, yeah. Um, Sorry, when, when gamma is 333? Uh, yeah. Oh, we don't know. We, uh, it's, this is the easiest click, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we know, some spe we know some stuff about that for other reasons, because we know some stuff about two-dimensional. Um, we know some stuff about that special case, but in general, we don't know anything about cliques. I mean, if, you know, for an arbitrary clique case, we don't know anything. There are some special, some, some, um, some of the affine ones um, John McCammon has some results on. And so there are some other known things for special cases, but no general theorems about the, about the clique case. Um, OK, let me make a, a, um, a remark. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to have time for this proof. Um, let me just make some remarks about, the, uh, about this. Um, it, this theorem isn't as good as we'd like. Um, and the reason is, when I say not a star and not a join, the two conditions, gamma's not a star, gamma's not a join, I'm talking about the unlabeled graph. All right, so what do I mean by that? Um, so, so the statement that gamma is not equal to uh, oh, that should be, sorry, is not a join. <laughs> right? It's not, cannot be decomposed as a join, is what that says, right? So the statement that gamma is not a join um, um, is, uh, refers to, and the same with the not a star, refers to um, the unlabeled graph. So what do I mean by that? So all it's saying is that, I, that gamma, I can't divide gamma up. There's a subgraph gamma 1 and a subgraph gamma 2. And I cannot divide it into two graphs where every vertex here is connected to every vertex here. That's a join, right? What would we really like to say? We would really like to say that it's acylindrically hyperbolic if gamma is not the product of two smaller things. We would really like to say, would like the hypothesis to read that a gamma is not equal to a gamma 1 cross a gamma 2. By the way, um, if it's a product, it can't be acylindrical. It, it can't, there's no possibility that it's acylindrically hyperbolic. So this clearly has to be ruled out. That's what we'd like the, the, um, um, the hypothesis to read. So hopefully some of you did some of these problems. What would I need to add? What else would I need to know to turn this guy into this guy? I would need twos on all of these edges. All right? This thing says nothing about the labels on the edges. We would like to be able to strengthen it to say you know, that we only have to worry about the case where they're all twos. All right? So it isn't yet quite exactly the hypothesis we would like, um, but we're pretty, sure it's, we're pretty sure we just haven't done enough work. That <laughs> it's just a matter of you know, working a little harder to get that. So, so I, I'm pretty sure the acylindrical hyperbolicity thing is, works. It's just that we, we're still, our hypothesis is still not quite as strong as we want. And the same, by the way, for the, those star, the star case, if it was a star with all twos, then it would be a product. Then there'd be a center element. Then this element would commute with everything. So of course it would have a center, <laughs> right? So you obviously have to uh, um, rule that out, but we haven't quite ruled that out. We've ruled out you know, a star without knowing what the labels are. Okay? So, so the hypotheses here aren't quite as strong as you'd like, but they're still, it's still progress. It's still um, good progress. So um, I would say, since I, I don't really have time to, I was hoping to actually do the proof of the, of the, of the um, center case. I'm, I'm done at 6, right? 6 is uh, yes. good. Good. So then let me just say instead, since I don't have time for this proof, um, um, that um, 
I think that really, so hopefully, you know, you've got the idea that there are a lot of open and interesting questions here. And um, really, the, the, the end of this story is, what do we do about the cleat case? I mean, the end of the story is we really are, um, have no tools at hand at the moment to deal with the cleat case. We don't have any nice complexes that they act on. We, we don't, we really, um, 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 that's the next step. That's the next um, big project is if anybody has any brilliant ideas of what, uh, you know, how, to, how to address the case where, where the entire um, gamma is, is, is just a clique. Right. And, and I should also mention, because some people have asked, there are other special cases where things are known. There are lots of papers out there where, you, you know, if, if, if um, the case where um, the two-dimensional case, that's the case where the only finite type ones are edges. There's nothing else is finite type. Um, the, a lot is known about those. Um, um, there's some stuff known about some of the affine ones. There's some, there, so there are various, various other special cases where we have some results, but um, the ones I've given you are sort of the most general, the most general things we know. So I'm going to stop there. <laughs> <laughs>